In this video, I wanted to show you V0 integration. So this just came out last week. And in this video, I wanted to demo it, how it works and how you can potentially leverage this in building out an application that you have in mind. If you don't have an account for V0, you will be able to try this out with a number of free queries per day. So you can go ahead and make an account and try out what I'm about to show you. What I'm gonna do in this video is we'll work through the process iteratively. And when we get to a point where we do need to integrate a database, I'll go ahead and show you what that new integrations feature looks like. Looks like. Within this, I'm going to say I'll build out a clone of Hacker News, except I actually want to be able to add and submit stories as if I was a user. Here's the first iteration of our Hacker News clone. And what I can say here is now I want to leverage Neon for my database so users can sign up and authenticate, make accounts, and also post to the platform as well. Now with the new integrations feature, when you go and ask for an integration, if you said something more ambiguous, like I want to add in a database, what you'd see here is a list of different options options. So Neon, Supabase, as well as Upstash are the options at time of recording. And just to show you how easy this is, if I go and I click add, what I can do is I'll go through the steps. All that you need to do is click add. You can determine the region. And then finally, you can determine which plan that you want to leverage. Now, the great thing with Neon is you do have the ability to have up to 10 free Postgres databases on their platform at any given time. I'm going to go ahead and click generate here. I'll call it Hacker News Clone. Then once you're done, it will close it out and it will continue the process process. So it's very seamless. Everything's going to be integrated within the Vercel marketplace. In other words, you're going to have all of the billing centralized within the Vercel platform, and there isn't going to be a markup. So you're going to be paying what you would have otherwise paid at Neon for the Postgres database. You're going to be paying the exact same price as if you were to go over to Neon themselves and sign up for the particular paid tier that you selected. Now, if I scroll down here, we see that we're going to set up our users table, our stories table, the comments table, and then you can go ahead and run the code there. Now that it's successfully created the database tables, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and complete the Hacker News clone here. Now, the nice thing with V0 is as it goes through the generations of different files, it can also edit previous files as you might expect. But the other nice thing that I just noticed within the platform is if there are any errors that were generated from the response from the large language model, it will go ahead and try and attempt to resolve those. It is nice to see some of those mechanisms within there where if there is erroneous code, it will go ahead and detect that. All right, so it went through and it generated an awful lot. We see that it generated the schema, the authentication for us. We see these stories. There are a ton of different files here. Now we do see that it is prompting us here. I'm just going to go ahead and I'll submit that. Once it's done that, what it's going to do is it's going to go and generate some sample users, stories, as well as comments. So when we had the first generation there, we did notice that we did have some stories, but all of those different stories were hard coded. Now what we're doing here is we're just going to be seeding our database with some temporary data. So we can see a number of different posts and we'll go ahead, we'll run this SQL statement. Now that we've seeded our database with some sample data, it's going to go through, it's going to enhance our Hacker News clone with additional storage functionality. It'll add user save stories and improve the comment handling. We'll just let that run through and then we'll take a look at once it's done. Here is our Hacker News clone. We can now save the stories so users can save stories for later reading. We have a dedicated page for all of the user stories and the ability to unsave stories. We have the user profiles, we have an enhanced header, and we also have the improved story details. Now, if I just go and click around here, so we have this first post, an open source alternative to ChatGPT. I'll go and I'll click the comments here. And within here, we have this link to that seeded data that we had generated. We also have a couple comments here. If I just take a look at the stories here, we can see all of the different values announcing Next.js 15. We can see that story here. Within here, I can go and I can click through to the comments. Comments. We also have these different tabs here. Say if I wanted to submit something, I can go ahead and log in, put in a password, or if I want to make an account, I have a sign up page here as well. I'll well, go ahead and I'll test this out and I'll try and sign up here. We see that we do have an error. Now, the nice thing with V0 is there's a really nice ergonomic way on handling errors where I can just click that button and it will pass that error into the AI model with the relevant context of what it needs to resolve that. Now, if I try and sign up again, there was another slight error where bio didn't exists when I tried to sign up again. Similar thing is I click to send that error into the context and it's going to work through the relevant files to update everything that it needs to hopefully have our application in a working state. Now that it's made those updates, this time we now see that I am logged in. Now, if I go and I submit the story, I can say, hello world. This is an example of building an application with Neon and V0. I'll go ahead and I'll put in an example link here, put in some lorem ipsum text. So I'll go and I'll 
I'll submit that. I now have this story within here. I can go ahead and I can click through within it. And additionally, since I'm now logged in, I can go and add in a comment. I can submit that comment. And now we see that comment persist on the page here. That's pretty much it for the application build. Now, the great thing with V0, if I want to deploy the application is I can go and do that with just one click. And you do have the option to easily set a custom domain. Next, just to touch on some of the code that was generated, so you can go and click on the code button here. And within here, you can edit the code just like you would within your IDE. You're not just limited to using natural language. You can always pull down this repository or alternatively make the tweaks directly within the interface here. Now, if I take a look at what was generated here, let's just first take a look at the DB, for instance. We see that we're using Neon from their serverless package. And then for our ORM, we're going to be using Drizzle. We're setting up our SQL client. We're passing that into our Drizzle configuration. From there, if I take a look at our schema, we do see this Drizzle generation for us. If you haven't used Drizzle before, this is effectively how you're going to be defining your schema. We have our users, stories, comments, so on and so forth. And the nice thing with using an ORM like Drizzle, if you were to pull this down, you'll have all of that nice type checking throughout your application. So say if you're building a Next.js project, you'll be able to have all of this type checking throughout so there's no conflicts for whether you're writing on the front end, back end, when it actually interacts with your database from Neon. And then from there, if we explore our app folder, we can see that we have our main homepage here. This is going to be where we have that list of different stories, where we have the Hacker News header. And then from there, we have our different pages as well as our routes. For instance, if I take a quick look at the authentication here, within here we see we're basically rolling our own auth. We're using the bcrypt library to hash our passwords. We're going to be using Jose for signing and verifying our JWT tokens. I always encourage you with these types of applications, especially if you're building something that you plan on putting into production, is just make sure that you do verify what it has generated for you. We have the different routes and pages for whether you're signing in, logging in, and then we also have a number of API routes within here. Finally, one last thing that I wanted to look at is how each item page is being generated. If we click on into one of the Hacker News stories, we're going to go within this route. This is going to be how you have a dynamic route within Next.js. And within here, if I just scroll down, we can see that within here, we're making the request to stories with the particular ID. And if I go into the stories route, we have an example of what our base query would be if we're going to go and pull all of the latest stories. Alternatively, we do also have some sorting. So whether the story is new, if we're clicking on the new tab, the top tab, we have these different queries on how it will ultimately go and make that request. So I just wanted to do a quick overview on what was generated. That is some feedback I have got with some videos is when I do showcase some of these text to app builders is some people like to see what the LLM is actually generating. Then finally, if you do want to see the information within your database, for instance, what you can do is you can head on over to Vercel, log into your account, go to the integrations tab. And in this case, I can click neon and then I can go ahead and click our project here. We have all the information about our neon instance here. We also have the quick start steps. And then finally, we can open it within neon by just clicking that tab there. Here you can see that I am using neon's free tier. If I go over to tables, we can go within here. We can see our comments. We can see our stories, our users, including the one we just set up, have the table for all of the different votes. Overall, kudos to the team over at Vercel for these new integrations. This is something that I've actually wished to see within text app builders for quite some time. When I did a video last year on a now popular text app builder, one of the comments that I had to one of the CEOs of the company was actually to have a marketplace of different integrations and not just to have one sole integration for these types of platforms. I encourage you to try out the platform as well as the new integrations feature. The platform, I have to say, has definitely come quite a ways from when I tried it just a number of months ago. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.